I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I've always imagined that Jesus' procession into Jerusalem was a bright, sunny day. Not quite like today. The cloaks being spread on the ground to keep the dust down, not to cover the rain-soaked mud. Jesus enters Jerusalem, the city of peace, in a triumphal parade. The shouts of, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven, resounded through the streets. The Pharisees in the crowd were not there to praise Jesus, but to watch him. They wanted this celebration to stop. Jesus knew what was happening, and he knew what was about to happen. The whole earth was celebrating his ministry. I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. All creation sings to God. The stones would sing out because they have witnessed the joy of Christ's ministry. And they would sing out because they have witnessed the pain of the world. But those in the procession were there to celebrate Jesus, His ministry, and the miracles they had witnessed. They were there to celebrate the hope that He brought to the world. Few were ready for what was to come next. The crowd at the procession was described as multitudes. The crowd at the foot of the cross was to be numbered on one hand. It's only natural to want to walk the easy road. Few want to delve into the depths of the next steps that Christ will take. It is for this very reason that the liturgy this day was changed. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ is normally read just prior to this sermon. And then we're free to joyfully celebrate Eucharist. We're then able to walk the easy road and be removed from the power of the passion. For many reasons, time demands, commitments, and perhaps an uneasiness of venturing into the darkness of Holy Week. Many will forgo that portion of the journey and rejoin the celebration on Easter Sunday. It's our hope that by closing our service with the Passion and then silence, we will carry the depth of the story in our hearts and firmly mount it on our shoulders until the light of Easter brings us the joy of resurrection. It is our hope that this will make Easter that much brighter. The next steps that Jesus walks are not easy. Following his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus overturns the tables of the money changers in the temple. Jesus is so full of love that he can't sit by and watch the injustice of the money changers without taking forceful action. This is when the road really starts to get rough. Like the disciples whose boat is tossed by a storm in the sea, Jesus says, do not be afraid, and calms the waves. When the weather's bad, and the seas are rough, we are called to action. Do not be afraid. When the road is no longer smooth, we're called to continue our journey and take each uneven step. It's times like this when the tables of the money changers must be overturned, when we must carry the cross and be prepared for what's next. When we stand on the precipice of the resurrection, we must take one more step so that we may rise in glory. Before us 
is a rough road. Last week I spoke a bit of the rough road that we face and encouraged all to focus on our true leader, Jesus Christ. The House of Bishops meeting this past week prayed and spoke of the rough road during their retreat and they unanimously issued a word to the church. It's a priest's duty to share with you the pastoral letters issued by our bishop. And on this occasion, the entire House of Bishops issued a letter to every congregation of the Episcopal Church. Here is their letter. A word to the church. On Good Friday, the ruling political forces of the day tortured and executed an innocent man. They sacrificed the weak and the blameless to protect their own status and power. On the third day, Jesus was raised from the dead, revealing not only their injustice, but also unmasking the lie that might makes right. In a country still living under the shadow of the lynching tree, we are troubled by the violent forces being released by this season's political rhetoric. Americans are turning against their neighbors, particularly those on the margins of society. They seek to secure their own safety and security at the expense of others. There is legitimate reason to fear where this rhetoric and the actions arising from it might take us. In this moment, we resemble God's children wandering in the wilderness. We, like they, are struggling to find our way. They turned from following God and worshipped a golden calf constructed from their own wealth. The current rhetoric is leading us to construct a modern false idol out of power and privilege. We reject the idolatrous notion that we can ensure the safety of some by sacrificing the hopes of others. No matter where we fall on the political spectrum, we must respect the dignity of every human being and we must seek the common good above all else. We call for prayer for our country, that a spirit of reconciliation will prevail, and we will not betray our true selves. The House of Bishops. Bishop Hollerith and all of his colleagues travel the same rough road that we do. And they know the next steps won't be easy, but are necessary. They know that every aspect of our lives should be informed by our faith. We are spiritual beings living in a human world. Our spirituality must guide our lives and our actions. In this way, we can respect the dignity of every human being and seek the common good above all else. Multitudes were prepared for the triumphal march into Jerusalem. Few followed Christ to the foot of the cross. This is a time to follow Christ, a time to overturn the tables of the money changers, a time to carry our cross and to be with Christ at the foot of the cross and to witness the glory of his resurrection. This is a time to bring the spirit of God's reconciling love into your life and the lives of those around you. It's a time to share God's love in all that we do and to follow the path to the resurrection. Let us pray. 
God of compassion, you sent Jesus to proclaim a time of mercy, reaching out to those who had no voice, releasing those trapped by their own shame, and welcoming those scorned by society. Make us ambassadors of reconciliation. Open our ears that we may listen with respect and understanding. Touch our lips that we may speak your words of peace and forgiveness. Warm our hearts that we may bring wholeness to the brokenhearted and dissolve the barriers of division. Guide the work of your church and renew us with the spirit of your love. Help us and all people to shape a world where all will have a place, where the flames of hatred are quenched, and where all can grow together as one. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.